poison. The poison for Cusco. All right, boys, it's been a minute. It's been a long time. It was July the last time we did a tier list. I don't even know if it's 2.5 anymore. It might be 3.5. I'll check later. Uh, the point is, we got to do a new tier list, boys. And it behooves me to remind you, it's such a good word, behoove, that we have a new game mode coming out in the in the near future. Not, not the distant future. In the near future, we have a new game mode coming out. The zombie multiplayer wave defense mode so i'm hoping that that game mode is not only very fun but also challenging but also has really good rewards so that it inserts itself uh, you know strongly and securely in the meta and then that way we can use that new game mode to really try to reshape this tier list because like I've been saying for a while, I just don't feel like this tier list is really, uh, you know, I, I, it's, I still think it's one of the best tier lists out there for sure. Like, not to glaze myself, but I, I also feel like it's it's kind of missing something. And before you get on me about, oh, the tier list needs to be split between PvE and PvP, no, we're not doing that. We're just not going to do that. The reason why we're not going to split it into PvP and PvE is because it's too confusing, A, for players, and and, and frankly, there's the thing. The, the players that need it the most are the players that are not day-to-day -day players, right? They're not hardcore players. Those are the ones that need the tier list most. So you want to make the tier list as easy to understand as possible, and splitting the tier list makes it more complicated. It makes it harder to understand. Um, secondly, we can already put in indicators and things like that for things like PvP. So I think the the answer, uh, if you for, for those of you out there that want something like uh, two tier lists. I think the answer lies in just improving this existing tier list. We just got to get creative. So here we go. Uh, Wolverine got a brand new uniform. Yes, I haven't done a tier list since Wolverine and Deadpool update. Uh-huh. Uh, Wolverine is still clearly one of the best. Honestly, I actually think he's better than Hulk. Um, I think he's the best combat in the game right now, bar none. I actually would say that he is just, just straight up up here. He's just so much better than Hulk. And anybody else, he can go absolutely dicko mode in PvE if you build him that way. Um, and then if you build him for PvP, obviously he's one of the baddest of all time. And yeah, that's just just the way it is. Obviously, you got the roadblocks with the uniform, or sorry, with the artifacts and stuff like that. Um, and he doesn't have necessarily hybrid. He doesn't have as good of a hybrid build potential as some other characters. But I still think he's very, very, very strong. Deadpool also did extremely well. Not didn't stick quite as hard for PvP, um, and not quite as good for PVE, but still very, very good. So I think he certainly deserves to be somewhere around there. Can we zoom in just a little bit here? Yeah. Okay. We don't really need to go too far out in the tier list uh, in the other direction because it's all just a bunch of crap down there. Uh, yeah. So I think Deadpool's pretty good. Um, you know, keep in mind that uh, he had a seasonal uniform. He doesn't need it anymore, so we can actually get rid of that. He doesn't need a seasonal uniform anymore. Um, does Deadpool need his tier 4? Yeah, I think he kind of does need his tier 4. I would say that he kind of does need his tier 4. He has a great leadership now. He loses the support ability because it's not a seasonal uniform, but that's fine. He kind of does need his artifacts for PvP if you're going to go in that direction, like you would for uh, Wolverine, so that's fair. And then, yeah, he does have PvP potential, but again, he's going to need that kind of max build situation now, it, it kind of bugs me that the art that the uh, icons are in the wrong order it, like for different characters but hey it is what it is um gwenpool also lost her seasonal uniform she does not need her tier four i would say i think gwenpool did quite well even though she was the mid-month we'll get to cassandra in a second here uh gwenpool was the other tier four uh, i don't think she has really pvp value doesn't need her artifact doesn't have a leadership i would say she's very easy to play for sure absolutely super easy to play especially when you compare that to mystique my lord that bitch was hard to play um but it, being a, being available for one day of abx doesn't really make her that relevant <sighs> i think like I, I guess you should put them in high meta like i don't know this is this is the thing right i, I would call this low meta in my opinion this is low meta um but it's like the highest of the low meta so it's almost like medium meta if you will um i also think that we have to address rogue here in a second when we talk about psylocke but we'll get there when we get there cassandra is pretty strong for a tier three got a good leadership but otherwise pretty useless 
Um, no supportability, no like insane debt. I mean, very good for a tier three. Very, very good. I would say certainly usable, certainly usable. But, you know, beyond that sort of stuff there uh, where you're going to use characters like Havoc, Spectrum, Mephisto, right? She's not going to do too much more. I mean, but in terms of value, right? In terms of value, she's much, much higher on this list because of the fact that she doesn't need a uniform. She doesn't need to be native tier three like Mephisto, you know, and she hits very, very hard for that. So I think that's fine. Uh, Betsy, Captain Britain is being uh, changed back to Psylocke here. So Psylocke regains her her original name. Does she need her tier four? Kind of, but not exactly. She does have a seasonal uniform, unfortunately. She doesn't uh, have a uh, relevant leadership. She doesn't have PvP value. Um, she's pretty easy to play. I wouldn't say she's too insanely easy to play. She's pretty easy to play, but let's, let's leave it there. Uh, but she's very, very strong. She hits super duper hard, and she's basically a better version of Cable. Now, unfortunately, it is a seasonal uniform, but yeah, I think she's just a better version of Cable. In addition to that, her gravity means that we have to address, not the elephant, but the rogue in the room, because she kind of bumped rogue off of that top spot. Rogue is still very good for PvE content, as you'll see in a video coming up in a few days. Uh, Rogue obviously is still a farming meta, so I'm a bit torn about moving her off the list. I almost think she just needs to be bumped down one uh, to represent her kind of decline. But again, it, maybe this, maybe the tier list needs some nuance in a different way to sort of illustrate that. Like she's on the way down or she's lost value recently. Maybe we need like an icon for like a red down arrow, which means they've lost value recently to sort of keep them in the same pool but also to, to highlight that uh, they're kind of slipping. Um, and then Yondu also gets a seasonal uniform, has an absolutely fantastic support ability. Um, I can't remember if his artifact also buffs his uh, support ability, but his support is very, very strong. So yeah, Yondu is a support meta for sure. Big time support meta. Uh, you'd probably put him right around... You know what? We actually have to... D rank Wong here. He's better than Echo. He's probably more useful overall than Sin. He probably deserves to be somewhere with like the Shuris and the Waves of, of I mean, honestly, Wave is too high. Yeah, I should fix this now. Uh yeah, Shuri should be here. Honestly, Black Cat is a little bit useless because she's tier two. And it's also a seasonal. Uh and I would put Sin above her as well. I think that makes a lot more sense. Anyways, a bit of a shuffle there for the supports. That's fine. But yeah, Yondu, very, very strong support overall uh, for the speed for the speed day, right? Obviously, there's other supports. <laughs> uh, but yeah, there's just a lot of good speed supports. Uh, and then we come to the most recent update that just landed last week with Iron Man through to Rescue. Now, Rescue, we haven't even made a re review video on. Uh, pretty bad overall. Uh, basically, just a leadership. She's just a leadership for PvP, for specifically Conquest. So that's just one game mode. Uh, one of the least played, least enjoyed game modes. So because of that, yeah, I can't really put her any more than usable, right? I, I can put her near the top of usable for sure, uh, around like Havoc and Spectrum's level, because yeah, she is usable for sure. But it's basically just the leadership and nothing else. The leadership, if you don't know, gives an HP bubble to allies, which allows them to stay alive longer, which is nice, again, for Conquest, but completely useless for Timeline, completely useless for any other PvP game modes, and then no value for PvE game modes makes her value uh, very suspect. Uh, Hulkbuster, unfortunately, he gets his Tier 4. I think he needs his Tier 4, and it's not enough in any case. Uh, he is PvP, but it's going to take more than a max build, I would say. He's not that good. He's, he's essentially just not that good. So despite giving him all of those tags, he's got to go somewhere down here, like with Captain America, genuinely speaking. Um, I think that's where he belongs. He basically is um, less investment than Mr. Fantastic, but not as good as Mr. Fantastic. So that's just not that's not a good ranking for a character, for a new character. You know, um, we we talk about how power creep is bad if it comes too fast. But at the same time, I feel like uh, we also struggle with not enough power creep. Like, it's it's un, it's unreal that Mr. Fantastic is better than Hulkbuster, despite the fact that he's a native tier 2 
And he also, like, the native tier 2 means he should be better than Hulkbuster. But then remember, he needs Franklin and Franklin's artifact to be relevant for PvP. All that being said, he's still better than Hulkbuster, who doesn't technically need anyone um, to be good. So it sort of speaks to not only the frustration of building certain characters, but also the the limits, the, the, the sort of arbitrary limits they place on characters. Like, why did Mr. Fantastic get iframe ignore and penetration um, when Hulkbuster just got iframe ignore and counter and, and no um, penetration? Because they're basically the same, right? They're basically the same otherwise. So it's, it's, it's very weird, very, very strange. But yeah, unfortunately, we can't put Hulkbuster any higher. War Machine, I think he's solid. He has a support ability, has a leadership. I think he's e pretty easy to play. Again, I don't know if he's as easy as Gwenpool is to play. Hmm. Maybe maybe he is. Maybe maybe he is. Let's let's put it there for now and see what people think. Um, I don't think he needs his tier four, although he got it. I think he's solid at level eighty, tier three, just to you know hit dam, you know do damage, high burst damage, whatever kind of thing. I think he's like a better version of Star Lord. Um, with no, with, well, I think he, he might be slightly more useful than Ebony. Huh. Um, and then I think he might be better than Doctor Strange. Yeah, I think putting him in useful at the top of useful is pretty fair. Um, he may be, I'd have to see testing of him at tier 4 to see if he can, can creep up on Human Torch. But I think that's a fair place to put him in the same conversation as someone like Human Torch, who's at the bottom of low meta. And War Machine's at the top of useful. He just hits really hard. Um, and then he has the added benefit of the leadership support. So I think overall he has got quite a bit of flexibility. I just don't want to rank him higher because a lot of players in Marvel Future Fight tend to overvalue damage over everything else. And I don't want to, without seeing a comparison more directly or indirectly between War Machine and Human Torch, I don't want to put him above Human Torch. But I'm tempted to right now because, like I said, he's got the damage. He's easy to play. Plus... He's got the leadership and the support. And the support is actually very good. You know what? I just talk, kind of talked myself into it. I think he actually does deserve to be up here in low meta. The leadership is, is very... The support is very good. I know it only applies to certain allies, um, but it is very, very strong, right? It's it's a uh, wave-esque support. Um, and then Iron Man gets a brand new uniform. He absolutely still needs his tier 4. It's not a seasonal. It's very easy to play, so I would definitely put him in easy to play now. Um, and then that's it. He doesn't have a support ability. He is not for PvP. He doesn't need his artifact. Um, and he's good. He's certainly good. The problem with uh, Iron Man is that he's not available for that much content. He is a bit of a one-trick pony, but I would still say he's pretty good. We do have to shuffle this around a little bit here. I think Strife is a bit overvalued here. We're going to move Storm up. We're going to move Strife all the way to the bottom here because he's just a, essentially a glorified uh, support. And then we're going to snuggle Iron Man right around here. I think, hmm, is Iron Man better than Sharon Rogers? That's a tough one. That is a tough one. I don't know if he is. So actually, as corny as it is, I think putting him right next to War Machine actually makes a lot of sense. I think they're in kind of a similar situation um, where they're just kind of, they're very solid characters, very easy to play, but unfortunately they're just not available for a ton of content. So their impact on the meta is low. Uh, like a Sharon Rogers, basically. But Sharon has the added advantage of just blowing up things even harder than most characters. So yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with how I've ranked these characters. Like I said, I'm still a little bit, um, you know, nagged by the feeling that the tier list could use something more. I think what that something more is, is going to be indicators. Because we did revamp all of these tags, and I am really happy with these tags. Useful, low meta, high meta, beyond. Uh, but yeah, I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments down below. Just keep in mind, I already addressed the sort of splitting of the tier list, so that's not really on the table. But otherwise, I'm open to all suggestions. And hey, I mean, if you make a really compelling argument for splitting the tier list, maybe. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm definitely approaching it with a negative or like a disagreeable bias. Anyways, hit me up in the comments down below. Let me know what you think of the tier list. Thank you so much for watching. Smash the like button if you enjoy the content. And I will see you in the next one. Take care.